In a summer dominated by superheroes, a few hidden gems were bound to fall through the cracks. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies you missed from summer 2017. Everyone says they're trying to help me, but nobody can find me in the new episode of Brigsby. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at films released during the summer of 2017 that didn't gain much attention at the box office, but deserve to find an audience going forward. <laughs> Number 10, The Little Hours. Beautiful morning, sister. Hey, don't f***ing talk Queen. to us. I get the f*** out of here. Alison Brie, Kate Micucci, and Aubrey Plaza are all invaluable actresses that don't always get the credit they deserve. The three continued their underappreciated streak in this overlooked period comedy, which centers on a servant that turns to a convent for asylum. This house of God isn't exactly a sanctuary, as the nuns have committed so many sins that it could take a lifetime to confess them all. Filthy conversation. Mind your own f***ing business. Lustfulness. Oh. <laughs> Homosexuality. It's too tight. Did you roll your eyes? Putting a satirical spin on the Decameron, The Little Hours was praised for its hilarious performances and outrageous screenplay. Granted, the Catholic League wasn't a huge fan, calling the movie pure trash. The filmmakers took this as a compliment, though, using the quote in the ad campaign. Eating blood? Do you think I've ever written down eating blood before? Number 9. Valyrian and the City of a Thousand Planets Home sweet home. Director Luc Besson crowdsourced and personally financed this longtime passion project, making Valyrian the priciest indie flick to date, as well as the most expensive European movie ever. Unfortunately, it couldn't compete with an overstuffed summer, making back just $132.5 million at the worldwide box office from a budget of between $177 and $210 million. Yeah, we're a team. While this adaptation of the French comic book series might fall short in the storytelling department, the film is worth a gander for its gorgeous production values alone. As he did with The Fifth Element, Besson serves up a banquet of eye candy, packing every shot with stunning imagery. Even if you turn the sound off, Valyrian would still offer a visual extravaganza that's out of this world. Number 8. Ingrid Goes West The couple that yogas together, stays together. Hashtag perfect. Aubrey Plaza appears again on our list, this time portraying an unbalanced young lady named Ingrid. An insta-fan who takes her obsession to another level, Ingrid goes to LA in order to befriend a woman named Taylor, played by the also underrated Elizabeth Olsen. Given the film's disturbing subject matter, Ingrid Goes West may not be for everyone. Anybody with a dark sense of humor, however, will find plenty to enjoy here. Have we met before? No. Aside from making you laugh, the film will make you think about social media's effect on society. For all the good social networks have done, they have also given birth to a generation of stalkers who see the world through their smartphones. I'm not a psychopath. I own you. I just want to be her friend. Are you actually insane? Number 7. The Bad Batch The chaos of this world is vast and unknowable. Receiving mixed reviews from critics and only getting a limited theatrical release, many people weren't sure what to make of this dystopian tale about muscle-bound cannibals. The cast brings together an unlikely assortment of actors, including Jason Momoa, Keanu Reeves, and Jim Carrey. On top of that, the film combines many different genres, from sci-fi to horror to dark comedy to romance, putting it in a league of its own. All the things you've done have put you right here. With that said, The Bad Batch will likely speak to audience that appreciate art that can't be categorized. Anybody looking for something a little out there is guaranteed a unique movie-going experience they won't soon forget. Being good or bad? Mostly depends on who you're standing next to. Number 6. Brigsby Bear You did it, Brigsby! If you combined Room with the adventures of Teddy Ruxpin, you'd get something along the lines of Brigsby Bear. Kyle Mooney stars as James, a man that spent his life underground watching an educational children's program. Upon being released to the outside world, James sets out to complete Brigsby Bear's story and find closure. Everything's very big. It's really very big. While some may write it off as too weird for words, Brigsby Bear is an ambitious, creative, and passionate film. It explores how characters on screen can feel more real than actual people and allowing us to see the world from a different perspective. Plus, it'll resonate with anyone that ever had their favorite show canceled abruptly. Ah! <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Number five. Beatrice at dinner. This is my dear friend Beatrice. Hi. Nice to meet you. Whether you support Donald Trump or not, nobody can deny that his presidency has mounted a lot of heated debates at the dinner table. With that in mind, Beatrice at Dinner was one of the summer's most topical movies. 
Salma Hayek plays a massage therapist that winds up breaking bread at a wealthy client's house. When I first came to the United States a long time ago... Did you come legally? Yes. Oh, this tenderloin was amazing. She naturally clashes with the other guests, most notably John Lithgow, as a politically incorrect entrepreneur. Tackling everything from illegal immigration to animal rights, the film isn't afraid to make its audience uncomfortable, which might explain why it wasn't a runaway hit. Years from now, though, people will look back at Beatrice at Dinner as a truly timely film. I think that fate brought us together. For what? I don't know. Revenge, maybe? Number four, A Ghost Story. When I was little, we used to move all the time. I would write these notes. A Ghost Story was a success at the Sundance Film Festival and earned rave reviews from critics. When it came to attracting mainstream audiences, however, the theater was essentially a ghost town. An acquired taste to say the least, David Lowry's film may prove too quiet, slow, and strange for some. If you're up for something surreal and experimental, though, a ghost story is bound to connect with you emotionally. What is it you like about this house so much? History? Relying on visuals to get much of the story across, this is a poignant exploration of life, death, and lost love. Casey Affleck in particular deserves praise for somehow turning in an emotive performance while spending a majority of the movie under a sheet. You do what you can to make sure you're still around after you're gone. Number three, good time. You're incredible, do you understand? Yeah. Seeing as how he's best known for playing Edward Cullen, a lot of people just can't take Robert Pattinson seriously as an actor. After Good Time made its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival, however, critics started to sing a different tune about the young heartthrob. Something happened. I don't know exactly what. Pattinson has already generated Oscar buzz for his performance as Konstantin Nikas, a thug who attempts to free his brother from jail following a botched bank robbery. You need another 10 grand. You get another 10 grand, your brother will get out. In addition to Pattinson's transformative portrayal, the Safdie Brothers film has received rave reviews for its thrilling narrative, energetic score, and eye-popping visuals. Sounds like a good time to us. But it's a nice dream. It's a nice dream. Number two, The Beguiled. We ask for your protection over our school and we pray that we will be kept from harm throughout the night. The Beguiled resulted in a Best Director Award for Sofia Coppola when it premiered at the Cannes Film Festival, but sadly got swept under the rug during its wide release. But audiences missed out on one of the summer's most fascinating films, carried by an all-star ensemble cast that includes Nicole Kidman, Kirsten Dunst, and Elle Fanning. Colin Farrell is particularly strong as a wounded corporal that seeks refuge at a girl's school during the Civil War. I admire your strength. I'm just trying to give them what they need to survive in these times. As sexual tension rises, an unsettling power struggle ensues. Throughout the film, we're not sure whether to fear these characters or sympathize with them. Either way, you'll be left on pins and needles from beginning to end. You want to get done to me, you vengeful bitches! Number one, the big sick. I'm just gonna <laughs> call an Uber. <laughs> Your travel will be ready as soon as you put on his pants. The Big Sick not only stands out as a great romantic comedy, but also one of the most honest modern films about culture clash. In addition to co-writing the semi-autobiographical love story with his real-life wife, Kumail Nanjiani takes center stage as a Pakistani man torn between his traditional family and Caucasian girlfriend. Can you imagine a world in which we end up together? I don't know. When the woman he adores slips into a coma, our protagonist gets to know her parents and begins to take control of his life. Timely, humorous, charming, wise, and meaningful, The Big Sick deserves a much wider following and shouldn't be forgotten with award season around the corner. Let me give you some advice, Kamal. Love isn't easy. That's why they call it love. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.